Suppose that we have an S domain function with a pair of complex conjugate poles and we need to determine its inverse Laplace transform. That is, suppose that the denominator of F, polynomial Q, when factorized involves a term of this form. This means that minus A plus minus JB, where J is the imaginary unit, is a pair of complex conjugate poles of function f. Then the corresponding term in the partial fractions expansion will have the following form. We can now make use of the following identities which we can prove very easily. For example, for this identity, we can observe that if a is equal to zero, this becomes the inverse Laplace transform of sine of b times t. But here, on the right-hand side, we have an exponential times a sine function. To multiply a time domain function by the exponential of minus a t is to translate its Laplace transform by a. This is the well-known identity that the Laplace transform of exponential of minus a t times f is the Laplace transform f uppercase evaluated at s plus a. In our case, f of t is the sine of b times t, which has the Laplace transform b over s square plus b square. We can prove the second identity following exactly the same procedure. You can write down these two identities because they are very useful and, and we will use them in uh, what follows. We mentioned that pairs of complex conjugate poles give rise to terms like that in their partial fractions expansion. In order to determine their inverse Laplace transform, we need to make S plus A and B somehow show up in the numerator. For that purpose, we start by adding and subtracting A and then multiplying and dividing by B. We can then decompose the inverse Laplace transform like that. And finally, using the identities that we just proved, the identities that we proved in the last two slides, we can obtain the inverse Laplace transform. The good news is that there is a way to simplify this even further. We can in fact combine the cosine and sine functions into a single sine. We can use this extremely useful trigonometric identity according to which a linear combination of a sine and the cosine can be written as a single sine with c and phi zero given by these formulas. Here, a tan two is the two argument inverse tangent function. Using this identity, we can write the inverse Laplace transform of b1s plus b2 over s plus a squared plus b squared as a product of a constant k times an exponential function times a sine function. It is not important that you memorize this formula. The key message here is that a determines the rate of growth of the time domain function and b determines the frequency of oscillation. Poles with a larger imaginary part will lead to a higher frequency function. Poles with a negative real part will produce functions that converge to zero, whereas poles with a positive real part will produce divergent and unbounded inverse Laplace transforms. Let us try to determine the inverse Laplace transform of this function. It is clear that zero is a pole of f. By solving the quadratic equation s squared plus 2s plus 5 equals 0, we can find that minus 1 plus minus 2j is a pair of complex conjugate poles. This means that we can write f as follows, and the corresponding partial fractions expansion will be a over s plus this uh, second term. We can now multiply both sides of this equation by s times s plus 1 squared plus 4 and after expanding, collecting and comparing the coefficients of terms of the same order, exactly as we did before, we end up with a linear system and we can obtain the values of a, which is 1 fifth, b1, which is minus 1 fifth and b2, which is minus 2 fifths.
This means that we can write f in this form, and the inverse Laplace transform of f is given by this function. This function involves a sign, which produces an oscillatory behavior. It involves the exponential function e to the minus t, which makes the oscillation stopper off as time progresses. And lastly, there is a constant term, which makes f of t converge towards 0 0.2. You can try to determine this inverse Laplace transform by yourselves. This is a function that involves a single real pole, a double real pole, and a pair of complex conjugate poles. Overall, those terms that involve purely imaginary poles give rise to sustained oscillations. The imaginary part determines the frequency of oscillation. If we move these poles to the left, we will obtain a diminishing oscillatory time function. The more negative the real part is, the higher the damping of the oscillation. On the other hand, if we move the poles on the right side of the complex plane, we will have a divergent and unbounded inverse Laplace transform.